One of the most exciting careers nowadays, I think anyway, are those folks that are just cybersecurity engineers, people who stop the bad people from getting into networks. Here are a few things that I recommend that you should be looking into, some of the skills that I recommend that you should be trying, some of the things that you could be learning a little bit more of, so that then you are at a good confidence level to take the plunge. My name is Emilio, I've worked in tech for a long time and I love it. I also run this YouTube channel right here and I would love it if you click on the subscription button, click on the bell, so that you don't miss out on anything. Now also, I love playing around with servers. I love building new tech, physical tech and virtual tech. And what I also love is the ease of being able to also do that in the cloud, to be able to build a server in the cloud to be able to easily scale up and scale down based on the needs. Now we of course know all of the big providers that offer these services, but there's a company that I've been using for a little while called Liquid Web that do a lot of great stuff from a cloud perspective where you can actually go and deploy your servers. You can go and pick exactly the CPU, the RAM that you need, the hard drive capacity, and then the operating system. And this interface is really, really easy to use. Being able to access it from absolutely everywhere just makes the whole process so much easier. And it's actually going to be cheaper for you than some of these big ones that are out there right now. So if you wanna set up your own cloud-based server, go check out Liquid Web. I've got a link to it down below in this video description. Now it's not uncommon that every single day you're opening up the newspaper, if you have an old sort of newspaper, and you're reading, so-and-so has been attacked and hacked, and like three billion records have been stolen. Pretty bad. All those records, people's usernames and passwords and birth certificates and everything have been thrown up onto the dark web, and there's people then selling that stuff to people for the highest bids, and, and it's just a big kerfuffle. So then there's a whole team of people who are making sure that those things don't happen. Here's the, here's the thing, right? This is something that a lot of people don't tell you. You can't stop everything. Okay, you can't stop everything. All we wanna do is we want to mitigate risk. There's lots of risks. You can't guarantee 100% that your systems will never run into problems from a cyber perspective, cyber risk perspective. It's, it's just not gonna happen. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to put as many systems in place, good processes in place, to try to prevent things as much as possible. Yeah, that's really what we're doing. Good cybersecurity people have a good understanding of a lot of the tech stack. They need to understand all the bits and how all the bits sort of fit together, ideally. So you've got people who work with servers, servers that are on-premise, servers that are in the cloud, servers that are running Windows, servers that are running Linux, servers that are running virtualization technology, VMware, Proxmox, Hyper-V. You've got networking people, people that are working with routers, with switches, with proxies. You've got people who work with storage systems, SAN, and NAS devices. You've got then all the developers, people who are making applications, stuff for websites. So, and here's the thing, all of those bits need to be secured in some way. You don't just put all of your servers in Azure and you just forget about it. Bad idea. And you just open it up for the whole world. It's sitting, it's sitting in the cloud, man. Like anybody could access it from anywhere in the world. So you need to make sure that there's right security in place to protect all of the stuff that's sitting in the cloud. At home, you've got yourself a door. You have doors because you wanna keep the bad guys out. You have locks on your doors because you wanna keep the bad guys out. You have an alarm system because you wanna keep the bad guys out. Pretty important to make sure that you got the correct locks and the correct doors on all of your tech. What are the things that you need to be looking and putting in place to ensure proper cybersecurity? Threat detection, vulnerability management. You wanna make sure that things are MFA'd, things are encrypted, there's proper security from a password perspective. You're making sure that there's good firewalls in place with proper rules in place. You wanna make sure that anything that's weird that's taking place in your network is notified. You need to know about it. And then you've got cybersecurity certification that you can go for, right? There's certain standards that you can go for. And look, you don't have to have all of these cybersecurity certificates to necessarily get a job, although they help because they give you a nice framework, but understanding about NIST, understanding about ISO 27001. You got the AI machine, go and do a bit of research around what NIST and ISO 27001 are and all the different recommendations that these two frameworks give you, because they're pretty important. Some other certs that you may wanna just go check out, one would be the Certified Ethical Hacker. You've also got the Certified Information System Security Professional. You've got the Security Manager. If you wanna work into management, you've got auditors, you've got all these other ones as well. So go and check some of those out. Again, they're not mandatory, but they're sometimes good to have, and they're gonna give you a really good overview around some of the things that cybersecurity experts should have. And then something that I recommend, 
you gotta have a very good problem solving brain. You see something, try to understand what the potential vulnerabilities could be here. If I look at a server, I've just built a brand new Windows server and I've just installed it and I need to deploy it. From a security perspective, what should I be putting in place to ensure that that server is protected? You wanna make sure that it's password protected with a very, very strong password. Making sure that the IP address that it's been assigned to, it's on a, maybe on a separate VLAN. It's not routable. It's got only the right ports that are allowed for traffic in and out. You wanna make sure that it's got the latest patches. Patches are pretty important. Understanding a little bit about what Wireshark is. Play around with Wireshark. If you haven't played around with it, go and download it and play around with it. Play around with PowerShell. Learn PowerShell. Get to understand different sorts of scene tools that are out there. Event monitoring. Learn how to understand logs, reading logs. What are logs actually telling you? Logs are gonna be your best friend. Learning more about firewalls is gonna be pretty essential. Security people need to know about firewalls. I need to understand what a firewall does, how to control ports, how to control IPs, how to do whitelisting, blacklisting. Hey, you've probably got a router at home that has a built-in firewall. Go log in and start playing around with some of the stuff in there. A good enough understanding around intrusion detection, prevention systems. What are the fishy things that are going on in a network? If John Smith down in the mailroom is accessing PowerShell, that's a bit suspicious. You should probably check that out. Learning about what endpoint protection software is. It's more than just malware and antivirus, but it's preventing a lot more things across your network from your servers and your endpoints. Something that I recommend is uh, going and playing around with uh, Linux. Yeah, it's one thing, but using a tool called Kali Linux. Like the main thing of Kali Linux is, is used for ethical hacking, for penetration testing. Penetration testers are essentially a group of folks that would go into a business to try to get into a business. Understand what the bad people do to get in. So then you can put in practices in place to protect yourself from that. So I'd recommend going and downloading it and installing it in your own environment. Play around with it, learn about it. Now something else that I'd recommend is try to hack into your own systems, right? If you've got a, if you've got like a little home lab environment or maybe at work, they allow you to have a little separate completely isolated testing sandbox environment, see how far you can get into the network. The best way that you can learn this is to be trying this yourself. So going and building your own home lab, going and building your own cybersecurity lab environment is gonna be one of the best things because in some companies, they're not gonna allow you to go and start trying to ethically hack into their network. It's not gonna happen. Like I've been engaged in uh, lots of penetration testing environments where I've had to hire pen testers to come in, for example, and we would give them a scenario. We would say, okay, I want you to try to get into our network and essentially elevate your privileges to a domain slash enterprise admin. I want you to get full access to a whole bunch of stuff and uh, come in just as a nobody with uh, absolutely no access to our network whatsoever. See what you can do. They may come in with a little Raspberry Pi with some tools on there. They may come in with their own other little computer running Kali Linux or another tool, plug it into a network, and they start scanning the network to see what they can find, building a nice map of your environment. They may go to the LinkedIn machine and get a little bit of a summary, an overview of the right people in an organization, people that they want to go and target, maybe IT people in a company that they want to target because they've got elevated privileges. The second scenario would be we just grant them a standard user access, right? A standard user, not an IT person, a standard user. So they've now got an account in Active Directory. Let's see what you can do. Maybe try that yourself. That could be a really, really cool exercise. In the cybersecurity space, you've also got two different sorts of teams, one called a red team and a blue team. And they've essentially got distinct roles to do a specific purpose. Like a red team essentially simulates an attack in a company system. Uh, and their main point is essentially doing an audit, a review, a cybersecurity test against the network to identify any vulnerabilities, any weaknesses, and they want to just try to get in as much as they can, the same way that a real life world attacker would try to do. A blue team is now trying to just defend the network from these attacks. They're going to be doing monitoring, detecting, responding to these security incidents, but it's not uncommon for both red teams and blue teams to know what the other ones are doing right? And this is a super effective way to get better at cybersecurity skills. So how do you get the job? How do you actually get the job? Firstly, go and try all of this stuff yourself. Learn all the stuff yourself. If you need to go and get certified, go and get certified. Read a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. 
It's very, very important. I've got a training course where we talk a lot more about cybersecurity, some of the tips and some of the techniques. So you can go and check that out in the description of this video. Understand at least from a high level, the basics of a lot of the tech. Think about all of the tech that a bad actor, a bad person, a hacker is going to try to get into. Know the tricks that they're gonna be playing against staff in an organization, against systems in an organization. And then once you feel that you are ready, ask, ask in the place that you're working right now and say, hey, look, I wanna take on some more cybersecurity responsibilities. And this may not be them giving you a cyber engineer, security engineer title necessarily. You are now our new ethical hacker and you're part of the red team. But as long as you express an interest, in wanting to learn more about cybersecurity, you're in a much better position. But don't just go and say, I wanna learn more about cybersecurity unless you have done your own work, your own homework in your own time. Sometimes you need that. You're not just gonna get it thrown at you on your lap. If the place that you're working on is not interested or there is not gonna be a role available for you, it's fine to go and look for work elsewhere. You know, there could be a company, right, that is posting an ad on LinkedIn looking for somebody that wants to become the new cybersecurity person. And just because you don't have that title you may have had that responsibility. You may have now the skills, the expertise in your own time. Build up your resume so that it has a emphasis on security, on cybersecurity. Show where you have strengthened systems that you've looked after. If you're a networking person, show how you've strengthened, how you've put in good practices around proper routes in your network. You've done proper segregation. You've got VLANs in place. Show that you had a firewall that was under your management and that you blocked all of these rules, you unblocked these, you had white lists and black lists because all of that, they're all cybersecurity hardening things, right? You wanna make sure that you boost your CV as much as possible with that, without lying, but have an emphasis on that. And then just go and start applying for roles. Let me know down below in the comments, what is your journey? What are you doing right now? And why do you want to get into cybersecurity? Also subscribe, click on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything and stay tuned for the next video as we continue talking about all things tech.